It's kind of surprising that this is so effective at dissolving fear and anxiety because it's so counterintuitive and yet so simple. Talking with a therapist, deep breathing, being mindful, distracting yourself. I tried pretty much everything that they recommend for anxiety. I even tried Valium to try and calm the panicky feelings that I would get on the evening of a club night that I was running. And I still managed to have a full blown panic attack on 30 milligrams of the stuff. Not recommended. Sitting on the door, sweating buckets, heart pounding, and failing miserably to hide from my friends the absolute dread of not enough people turning up to cover the costs. Now, I'm not saying these things don't help at all. I'm definitely not recommending anyone stop their therapy or medication. They can be helpful for some or a lifesaver for others. But for me personally, and so many that I talk to now, many of the things that we try for anxiety help temporarily, but they never seem to get to the root of it. And the fear just keeps on surfacing. Why? I think there's a problem with how we try to deal with anxiety in society. We think it's a bad thing. We want to get rid of it, hide it from other people, and make sure no one sees our moments of weakness. We want to do everything we can to stop experiencing what can sometimes be extremely intense and uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. Quite frankly, we fear it. But should we? What I've learned is that when we fear anxiety, we set up a cycle of fear, a feedback loop of fearing the fear and then fearing the fear of the fear as we spiral into panic or a full-blown anxiety attack. So there's got to be another way, right? And I'll talk about the way that I discovered after addressing a few things that I discovered didn't work for me long term and what I did otherwise. The first thing is that I thought, I am just an anxious person. It runs in my family. It's probably in the genes. It's just who I am. And this identity had me stuck in it. One day, I heard those exact words from someone else. And I thought, because I love this person. But you're not just an anxious person. Don't give yourself that identity. When you do that, you're making it your reality. But I realized that I was doing a similar thing in my own way. I think we have to be very careful about the words we say after. I am. These are very powerful statements that can massively influence our reality. I chose a new frame. I thought I may experience mind-blowingly intense anxiety, but it isn't who I am and it can change. And when I let go of the anxious person identity, I could see that maybe I'm not going to be like this forever. And I started to embody the changes that followed. Now about deep breathing, we often get told just calm down, take a deep breath, don't we? And don't get me wrong, taking a moment to withdraw attention from all that thinking and focus on the breath for a moment can be really helpful. But after doing research on the best science of breathing that I could find, I learned that the deep breath thing is actually a bit of a misnomer. And breathing very deeply or heavily, especially through the mouth like I was, activates the fight flight freeze response even more which when done in an uncontrolled way is going in the opposite direction of what we want we don't want to be breathing shallow we want to be breathing deeply in one way but deeply into the body breathing with our diaphragm but gently and slowly and through the nose i call this slow nasal diaphragm breathing or SNDB for short. And I was doing the opposite. Taking a deep breath when anxious is a temporary band aid. When we're not doing something intense like exercising, we should be breathing softly and slowly. SND breathing, I found out, is actually the way we should be breathing most of the time naturally as humans. But in recent history, due to many different things, many of us have got into this habit of mouth breathing and into the chest. It took a while to retrain myself out of that lifelong habit and into this new way of breathing. But as soon as I tried it, I found a deep sense of relaxation would work its way into my body. Mindfulness is a strange word, really. It sounds like mindfulness, like my mind is full. I thought to stop anxiety, we needed the opposite, right? 
I feel mindfulness can be a helpful first step for many. It's an amazing thing to learn that you can take your attention away from those catastrophizing and ruminating thoughts and instead place it on your senses, what you're feeling or what you can see and hear to cultivate a kind of meta-awareness. But for me, this kind of practice often became a distraction from what I really needed to face. And walking around trying to be super aware of everything often just made everything more intense and more anxiety-inducing. And however hard I tried to take my attention away from those pesky dread thoughts, they would come right back as soon as I took my eye off the ball. It just became this practice that I had to sustain until I couldn't keep it up anymore. And, and it didn't get to the root of the fears. Don't get me wrong. Mindfulness is kind of like another word for presence. It can be the difference between being completely focused on thoughts and being with reality. But I found a much deeper relief when I started to accept that the thoughts are there and at certain times, yes, actually engage with the thoughts. Which leads us onto this profound revelation, this transformative approach that shifted everything for me. And I'll break it down into a few steps. Firstly, I started to actually entertain the thoughts. Thoughts would pop in like, what if I run out of money? What if I go crazy? What if this person dies or what if I die? And I would respond to the thoughts. Okay, what if? So what? It might be really uncomfortable. It might be intense or just a bit sad. But would it really be that bad? I mean, running away from those thoughts of these potential realities isn't helping and is just holding the fear in place. What if I actually entertain those thoughts? What if I accept that many of my loved ones will probably die in my lifetime and at some point my body and mind will too? I realized that constantly fearing all of this stuff was making it worse and probably making it more likely for certain things to happen. And what I found is that when I dropped my resistance to these thoughts and these potential realities, my fear of them started to dissolve. I started to dismiss the thoughts. Okay, so, so what? And then I began to welcome the feelings. Every time panicky feelings arise, you feel these intense sensations in the body. But I could see that no matter how intense they were, they would never really harm me, the real me. I can see that there is this awareness at the core of who I am that's untouched by any of these thoughts and feelings. And I started to allow the feelings to rise up in my body, to fill me up. And instead of trying to shove them down, I would let them flow in and up and out. And I would open up my body, open up the chest, and imagine the energy flowing through and up and out my chest. And at first, it seemed crazy. It seemed so counterintuitive. At first, staring fear in the face seemed even more terrifying, more intense. But I would remember that it's simply intense nervous system arousal and old fears and emotions coming up to be seen and released. I would say, bring it on. Do your worst. And for a few minutes, my heart would be pounding, be feeling so dizzy and disorientated, feeling all of these intense sensations in my body and seeing all these crazy thoughts and images. And I would just let whatever's happening in my body happen. But after a few minutes, to my amazement, the feeling started to dissipate. The thoughts started to calm down and my body started to relax and a profound sense of empowerment came over me. It started to prove to me that I don't need to run away from this anymore. I can take this. I can bear anything. And I started to realize that every time I allowed the anxious feelings to surface and welcomed them, there would often be another feeling underneath, maybe some anger, some sadness. Sometimes I shed a few tears, but then I would feel a profound sense of relief and, and a new excitement afterwards. It's like a new space opens up. Something that's been hiding and suppressed for so long has finally been released. 
another layer of the onion of all that fear and tension that I'm holding in my body has peeled back and gone forever. You see, anxiety is often a cover for another emotion. I realize that sometimes we're feeling so anxious because we're trying to push down another feeling, something that we think is perhaps unacceptable to feel or that we can't bear it, but we can. I saw a profound revelation that had been gifted to me by the great sages and the masters. I am, you are, we are this awareness that's untouched by all thoughts and feelings and all experiences, even death. There were so many things that I was running away from. Just simply looking at my bank account would set off all kinds of anxiety and I hid away from looking at the scary numbers until I absolutely had to. So I started getting into the habit of facing it and using it as some kind of exposure therapy to open up the app and to sit there and look at the numbers, whatever they are, and allowing all the feelings to come to the surface. And to my surprise, I felt a lot less anxious about it all afterwards and more empowered to actually do something about it. At the root of all of this fear is the fear of death, the fear of annihilation. And when you believe that all you are is this body and mind, then the fear will always be there. But I feel that we are more than this temporary human form, that there is an essence to us that's unharmable and eternal. And I feel anxiety attacks are the perfect time to experience this. I would lay there on my bed, allowing all of these intense feelings to flow through my body, like powerful electricity, clearly seeing that they don't touch the awareness, they don't touch who I truly am, they don't touch who we truly are. Accepting and welcoming anxiety is the counterintuitive approach that so many of us need. The true solution, to stop fearing the fear and instead face it, transmute it, allow it to rise up and release it and let it go. And I believe you can too. I also learned that so many of our fears come from deep-seated attachments formed by traumas and emotional wounds from the past. The ability to accept and welcome feelings is a profound start. But for full transformation, we sometimes need to go deeper. And healing and releasing our attachments is the next level for many of us. If you want to begin learning how to do that, click the video right here. Peace.